I must announce, Oaken Sport is taking legal action against a competitor. I'm sure you've all heard of Elon Musk and his company Neuralink. Without creating a brain link interface between uh, uh, any species and a computer. Basically, he stole that idea from us. We started Neuralink, and we were the first people to integrate an ESP32 into an animal's brain. We are taking steps to litigate immediately, and we expect one of the largest financial payouts ever on the order of magnitude around five to six hundred dollars. I got a box of electronic parts, and I got a couple of electronic probes. What am I gonna do with them? We're going to build an automated fruiting room controller so we can finally get rid of this. My humidity probe had arrived. Oh yes, my humidity probe. Which means I could finally finish building my controller. The humidity probe I got is a Vaisala HMD112 and it's rated to 2% accuracy up to 90%. It is a perfect mix between affordability and quality. This is my analog to digital converter and it will receive the 4 to 20 milliamp signal from my humidity probe and send it on through to the ESP32. My CO2 transmitter is a Dwar model CDD. It's a 0 to 10 volt transmitter and I've been running it for a long time now without a hiccup. Big thanks to George at Gem State Mushrooms for helping me figure out how to connect this thing. This is an ESP32. It's going to be receiving the signals from my probe and transmitting them to the Raspberry Pi running home automation software. These are my DC to DC step down converters. One does 24 volt to 5 volt and one will do 5 volt to 3.3 volt. And this is the enclosure with a meanwhile 24 volt power supply already installed in it. I custom made the back plating inside. So we've got all the parts I think I'll need, well fingers crossed anyway, and we're going to now get them all mounted into our little controller box here. Uh, this box will be responsible for controlling the uh, conditions inside the fruiting room out there. So we'll get all these parts mounted in here, and uh, once that's done, we'll take you through the box, we'll take you through just how it works, and we'll get it out there and we'll get it working. Guys, it's really cool if you like and subscribe. It's almost as cool as Patreon benefit inbound in three, two, one. The wee town of Sasis in Latvia, I mean, their coat of arms is a dude standing on a castle taunting people with a sword. So after far too long trying to get everything to work, I present to you version 1 of the automated fruiting room controller. So what's happening here is the power comes in and gets converted to 24 volt via this um, uh, 240 volt to 24 volt converter comes up to the top here and then it gets distributed down um, into a 5 volt converter and then furthering further down into a 3.3 volt converter the 5 volt converter powers the um, analog to digital board here and the 3.3 volt converter powers the ESP32 here that ESP32 is what connects to Wi-Fi and what sends all the signals back to my PC also feeding off the 24 volt line are the two inputs here because both of my probes here and here take 24 volt to power. So I was really looking forward to getting this outside and getting it working today. It does work, I have had it on, I have tested it. But I have one problem, there's always problems. I just blew my 5 volt step down converter. So you guys should be able to see that. That little chip there lit up on me. So I had another look at it and I wanted to figure out just why I actually blew this part here. Um, and it turns out that these two wires here were backwards. Uh, these go up into the analog to digital converter here. And so this was feeding its positive in and it was grounding it straight to here and feeding it out the ground. So that was just um, going wide open throttle on the current and it just um, blew that little part to bits there. So lessons learned to check all your wiring before you put it back together and you put current through it. Two days later, my replacement part has arrived. All right, the new step down converter is in. Um, so it goes 24 volt to 5 volt to 3.3 volt. Um, this takes 3.3 volt and this takes 5 volt. And the probe here actually takes 24 volt. We've got one small problem, um, and that's this probe here. And I can't quite figure out the code to get the uh, humidity um, sensor on it. Sorry, the temperature sensor on it working at the same time as the humidity. You can see they're both coming through this uh, connector over here. But I'm just going to have to figure that out in the, in the coming weeks. I spent about eight hours last night trying to suss it and I've just had having no joy. So I'll get this out in the room now.
This is my percentage timer. Um, I think these are bloody good pieces of kit here, and every mushroom grower should really have have one. You can actually use these to control um, well both, most parts most parts of the mushroom grow. We'll just be left with a uh, power supply for the lights up there. <coughs> I should really get that into a um, junction box. But right now, I spent so bloody long getting this um, getting this automated um, box created that I'm simply going to get it up here now if you're wondering what this little wire here is doing that's actually controlling an IP68 fan which is in there and all that's doing is just helping circulate the air around because I was getting the feeling like the ears when the extractor fans not on or the humidifier's not on the air might have been getting a bit stagnant and a bit still in there and I really wanted a little bit of airflow just moving around um, I do need to sort that out though it's on a list of things to do So this is one of the probes here, and this just connects in there, and I'm just going to put that straight through the wall up here, and straight into the fruiting room, and it will stick into the fruiting room about that far there. So if you're wondering how exactly this is going to turn on my humidifier or my extractor fan, um, the answer is simple. With these smart switches here, one is marked for ventilation, and one is marked for humidity. So when this um, detects, this sends a signal back to my computer, and when my computer um, or um, well the home is not my computer, the home assistant running on the Pi, when that detects the um, CO2 or the humidity is too high, it simply flicks one of these switches on or off. And these switches will then power the extractor fan or the humidifier to keep the room, um, the room's atmosphere uh, where I want it. These simply plug into this board, like so. That one's on, and that one's on. So it's all connected up and it's working perfectly. Well, as perfect as I can get it, we can't actually get the temperature reading from this into the device back to my computer yet because I simply don't know how to code it. All right, I managed to get one channel of my uh, little uh, analog to digital converter working, but I can't get the second channel working because when I'm looking at code, I don't know what I'm looking at. All right, I'm just trying to copy paste, and I haven't, I haven't figured it out. If you think you do know how to get it working, feel free to drop me a message because I would love to have the. Um, uh, the temperature control um, for, for this room put through this box as well. One other thing I still need to do is I'm going to get a little screen which is going to go in the front of this. Um, so when I walk out here I'll be instantly able to tell um, what the temperature, humidity and the CO2 levels in this room are. But we'll take you through to my computer now and we'll show you just um, what it looks like. So we can actually look through and see just how this is coming into the fruiting room. Through the wall and just like that there whether or not the door being right next to it is going to affect it, I mean, every time I open the door, obviously dry air is going to come in. Um, oh, I'm not too sure, I'm just going to have to wait and see. Um, if we look inside, we can actually see on the graph me entering and leaving this room, how it disrupts it. So have a look at that quickly. So this is what it looks like from my PC inside. You can see the CO2 here, and you can see how quickly it rises, and when it gets above 800, the extractor fan automatically kicks on and pulls the CO2 back down fairly quickly. You can see how fast the CO2 can build up in a mushroom fruiting room. It's faster than what a lot of people realise. This is the humidity here, and you can see how quickly it rises when the humidifier comes on, and how quickly it drops as well. It's dropping fast because my extractor fan is turning on regularly to get rid of the CO2. You can see this patch here, that's when I entered the room to cut some mushrooms. The same with this patch here. It disrupts the CO2 and the humidity in the room.